In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can utilize tasks to assist you with managing your portfolio in Arthur. First, we'll have a look at where we can find our tasks. As you can see, we have our tasks on the left-hand side from the dashboard. If you expand this, we have tasks, scheduled tasks, task types, subtask templates, and scheduled reminders. We'll be going through all of these in a bit more detail. You can also find your task from within the specific tenancy, property or unit that is related to. So if you're looking for a task in Arthur, you can either go to your task index page and search for it there. Or if you know which unit, tenancy or property it's related to, you can go into the tenancy unit or property. And you can find it here on the left under tasks. OK, adding a task. Again, you can do this straight from within the property unit or tenancy by adding task in the top right, or you can go to more and add task. This will automatically relate the task to the property unit or tenancy that you create it from. So there's no need to select the relation. Also, you can add your task from your main task index page. This is where all of the tasks that you create within Arthur, whether they are in progress, overdue, completed or cancelled, they will reside in this area. So now let's look at adding a task. Adding a task in the top right. First, we'll need to select our unit tenancy or property since we're creating this directly from the task index page. We'll need to select the relation. So type in there a few letters that will help you find your property unit or tenancy. Select it and add a description. And a time. Now you need to assign it to someone. You may want to assign this to yourself as a reminder that this needs to be done. You may need to assign it to a fellow property manager within your team you may want to assign it to multiple property managers within your team you'll need to select a task type we can create our own task types i'll be showing you how to do that soon and if you need to import a subtask template or a checklist we can also do this and i'll also show you how to create these they can be created directly from within the task by clicking Import Subtask Template, New Template in the top right, Name Your Template, and begin adding items to it. Generally, these would be things like move out checklists, checking inventory, checking tenants rent has been paid things like that once you've added in all of your items you can save template and then use template is this an emergency yes or no so on your task index page this will be tagged as an emergency if you select yes. And if you select share with tenants, this will show the tenants that the task has been raised and they'll be able to see the data on it. Now, depending on which level you add this to, that will matter to who, which tenants will be able to see this. If you add this at property level, all the tenants that are active within that property will see it. If you add it in at unit level and you have, for example, a HMO uh, with four rooms, and you add it to room three and you make it, share this with the tenants only the tenant that is in room three will be able to see this if you add this at tenancy level only the tenants that are on that tenancy will be able to see this okay you can add images and documents by clicking on there and selecting them from within your files again this will be visible to the assignees and the tenants. 
Okay. You can also make this a scheduled task so that it reoccurs. No repeat obviously indicates that this isn't a scheduled task and it's a one-time thing. And here, if we just select our frequency on the first day of every month, this will generate this task with these, this information. If you select an end date, that means the task will stop generating on this end date. No end date will leave you guys to manually end this. Then you can go ahead and save your task. And you'll now see the breakdown of the task as it's been created. The property managers that have been assigned, this has been assigned to, will be able to see this. They can check off the checklist if they need to and update the status as and when they need to. So once they've picked this up, they can set this to live and they can set it to completed once it's finished. Okay, all, all information that you put into the task will be available to the assignees. As you can see on the left, documents, are there any work orders associated to it? Reminders, we'll look at scheduled reminders and any messages on the thread of this task. These could be between the property managers assigned or the tenant can be included as well. You can add a scheduled task from the top right. It will have it will look exactly the same as a task, except it will tick that box for you. As you saw before on a normal task, we tick that box and we can make it a scheduled task. This page is just going to include all of the scheduled tasks within your Arthur. And this is where you can make them inactive if you need to. Task types. Now we can add our own task types in. As we saw there when we created the task, we need to add a task in. Some of these tasks that Arthur have uh, generically may not be relevant to your portfolio. So you may want to add in your own task types. Add a task type in the top right. Name it. Select a nice icon for it and a color. So if this task is raised with this particular task type, we can make it so that a subtask or a checklist is imported automatically whenever a task is raised. Again, you can select a property manager so that they are always assigned to this task when a partic this particular task type is raised on a task. Available to tenants simply means that tenants are, uh, you are giving tenants the ability to raise this task with this particular task type. If you untick that, when a tenant goes onto their app and tries to raise a task, this task type will not be visible to them. Hit continue and your task type is saved. You can now add a suggested solution since it's available to tenants. So for example, if this was fire alarm will not stop um, beeping, um, press red button twice and turn key clockwise. Now when a tenant raises an issue with this task type, they'll be given this suggested solution straight away meaning you may not have to action this and this may fix the issue straight away. So you can save that. And now when a tenant does raise that, that solution will be suggested to them. Subtask templates, as we looked at before, we could, they can also be created here in subtask templates on the left by going new template, name your template, and adding items as we saw before. Okay, save template. And that is now ready for you guys to import when you create a task and when you need it. Scheduled reminders. These are messages that will go out to either a tenant, property manager or a property owner. Like you say, these are scheduled re um, reminders that will go out on a certain specified frequency, uh, the frequency that you set on the days that you set to the person that you specify. <laughs> Firstly, you'll need to 
select the property unit or tenancy that this reminder is going to be related to. Name the reminder. This is for your reference, as you can see here just behind this box. Add a description. And now this is the schedule. We can add this on. We have several frequencies that we can have this reoccur on. Uh, what I'm going to do is monthly. On every month on the 20th, we want this reminder to go out. We'll have it start on the 4th of the 11th, 2020. And we want this reminder to go out at 5 o'clock. Again, no end date indicates that if you want this reminder to stop, it will need to be manually stopped. And if you select an end date, it will stop on, it will stop generating on that end date. Now we can choose who we want this reminder to go to and how. Now tenants, these will be, because we have a property, these will be all of the tenants within that property that are active. This will be, if we select property owner, that will be the property owner. And if we select property manager, that will be the assigned property manager. Again, if we select a unit, that will only go to the tenants that are active in that particular unit, the owner of that unit, and the assigned property manager to that unit. If we select a tenancy, again, only the tenants within that tenancy, on the property owner of the unit that the tenancy resides, and the property manager associated to the tenancy. If we select an email, that is going to email the tenants, that's going to email the property owner, and that is going to email the property manager. SMS will be a text message, and notification will be an Arthur notification. Once you've selected those, you can submit, and that will then save your scheduled reminder, which will then go out on the specified dates at, at the specified frequency. Thank you for listening.